guys, Repairman here. So I'll give you a little tour of our current sorting system, the one that's in our old legacy edition of Minecraft before it jumped over to Bedrock. So I'll jump down. All right, so just to get things started, uh, our whole storage system, we can just come over here, open up the chest, dump our goods and materials in here, those get dispensed down into a water pipeline that then flow underneath and then get put into a queue and then slowly to reduce lag and water bunching up of the items and stuff they're slowly shot up the water elevator and put into the sorter at a slow pace because it takes about six minutes to make it through the whole sorter because it's such a long path and so many items um, to be sorted in this whole system because there's like I believe it's like 700 different items can sort in here not including all the non-stackable with our non-stackable sorting machine down there all right so as far as storage capacity and management we have dispensers filled up with shock boxes full to the brim of items and a shock box that has one dispense down here after we prime it after it's primed which it's already got a shock box dispense so it's primed then once that's emptied it will be detected this system underneath our feet will fire off and shift out and crush that shock box firing off the dispenser dropping a new shock box out there full to the brim since we have a supply of shock boxes already there. Now, as the sorter sorts, they will drop down from the sorter above, go into a shock box loading one wide tileable machine, and then get crushed and put into these the storage silo here. And once it's completely full to the brim, this light above us will turn on saying, hey, we need to either increase the storage capacity, which I would just break out the block above there, pop another chest on, or go behind the unit and put chest behind it. Increase storage unit on the fly if necessary, especially if you know cobblestone or something where we have massive, massive amounts. But uh, right now this whole sorter storage capacity without upgrading the storage by popping on that block or adding behind it is 180 million storage capacity here. So quite a heaping amount and uh, as these these ones aren't primed they'll be up all right uh, now besides for the input chest there we have two at the entrance one on each side we have one at each corner and then one down at the middle of this hallway and one at the very far end now to try and help navigate what's where especially since it's a long long uh, u-shaped hallway here we have sections lettered section f is this one whole wall and then it's one through ten and we have a, a spreadsheet with all of the different items in it so that way someone could just jump in search for a particular item and it'll say it's oh it's a uh, f7 oh okay there's f10 we just go over here f7 over there and then grab our item out of the uh, shock box. Now, if it's something we need massive amounts, uh, you know, we're uh, grabbing some end stone here. We can just go in here, grab a full shock box of that, and off we go. Or if we just need a single stack or a parcel, we just grab it out of the shock box. And then we have little mini crafting assistant units. Uh, put your shock box of items in there, it'll dispense it out here, and grab it craft it, drop the end result in there, it'll crush it when it's full, put it in there, and you just rinse and repeat until all of those shock boxes are done. So say if you're doing like four shock boxes of uh, redstone dust or redstone blocks or vice versa, you could do that with this. And at the other end we have a double input. So if you have, say, uh, make a sticky piston, you could put slime balls on one side, of shock boxes and shock boxes of pistons on the other side and we'll shut those out 
and once they're empty they get crushed and the next full one gets dispensed. Now to reduce lag we also have some anti-lag measures in here um, and I'll give you a little cutaway view of the system too if I can get in there. And this is all done in survival as well uh, achievements and all that are in here. All right, to reduce lag we go and there's a ton of hoppers back here that would be pushing items constantly checking those chests constantly searching through them for items to see if it can push the items in there. Well we need to stop that when it's not necessary so we have a torch tower here to shut that down but we don't want to do the whole thing all at once so I have them staggered uh, 12 tick delay between each section all the way around the whole sorter and then on top of that we don't want to shut them down with the sorter running and we have six minutes for the after that last item shot up the elevator six minutes to make it around the thing maybe a little less than six minutes but roughly about six minutes so we need those to stay on after that so what I do is after that last item is dispensed up there that would drop this redstone block down unpowering this when it's powered it resets it when it's unpowered it starts this binary clock the reason i picked a binary clock rather than um, you know ethos hopper timer is because this can be instantly reset on a dime so if we're halfway through the clock and this thing's there we go reset it it's also going to start counting as this thing is running if it's two minutes in and oh some more items got dumped in well ethos hopper timer kind of hosed with this it can reset in the middle of it going back down to zero and starting the timer back at 60 at six minutes and these will just cycle through one by one and if i needed to double this right now this is a little over six minutes here and if i needed to add more if i had one more piston unit on the end that would double this because it's binary so it would be 12 minutes in this unit and the whole thing is pulsed from this little clock here it's a little heartbeat so I could also go and adjust it by adding more comparators there for my heartbeat to slow down if I needed just a slight adjustment rather than adding a full doubling now another thing too here is we also need to fill up those empty shock boxes up top there so all these units don't have a crazy huge supply they only have uh, a dispenser full and a hopper full uh, so in order for this whole thing to keep going we also have a shock box storage facility down below empties and an unloader so when you dump in a full shock box that has all its items in it will go to our unloading machine over here well the non-stackable machine will first go and pull out all the different non-stackables and stackable items and this shock box that will get separated here this unit will determine if it's full or empty if it's empty it will go straight to the storage if it's full this unit here then we'll drop down here and unload it into the sorter we'll go under the water pipeline pop up through here where it merges with all the other items coming in from both halves of the sorter and then we have a pre uh, a pre filter all the items we want to pre-cook before we're going in the sorter they get pulled out first and everything else goes through and gets sorted so like wet sponges for instance those we just auto cook they always get sorted out put into a furnace that's down below and then shot back up and put through the sorter now as far as the shock boxes those empties it's quite critical that we have them stored underneath and have them unloaded and figure out how to separate them so that way this whole process works well because then after the empties are down there when one of these units becomes low on shock boxes for compacting the storage up there it will then stop powering one of those pistons that piston will pull the redstone block up 
it will touch the dust, which will then go all the way over to the center from no matter what side it's on, drop down, you have a little redstone uh, slime block line, rather than redstone dust to reduce lag, because slime blocks sit in perfectly still don't really cause much lag. And then that goes and powers the unit down here. We have a long clock, like uh, I think we have a, like a 30, 40 second clock down there. It'll fire one shock box every 30, 40 seconds, and that'll go around the sorter if by chance it happens to be a far end of the sorter and it drops out too many because it'll take a while to get there before it triggers the shutoff. It circles back around and drops them back into the sorter, which will then cycle through, get detected as an empty, and get stored away again. So quite a variety of different machinery to make sure things work seamlessly and smooth. Oh, now another thing too is I want to also sort away quite a bit of our non-stackable items. We've improved this over the years, constantly adjusting the design. So uh, let's get over here. All right. So first and foremost, we go and separate the stackable items out. You know, get extra stuff like uh, cobblestone that overflowed or something like that. That would come through this way. And uh, we don't want the non-stackable sorter, which is quite slow for stackable items being considered. Uh, so we don't want those going through there. So we pull those out first. And uh, other items that we haven't sort programmed in the sorter yet, maybe like new items in the future. And then from there, it will go through a shock box filter. So if it's shock box, it can't go in here. So then it just drops down to our empty fill detecting unit and we already went over that all right so then from there after that we'll drop down over here if it's potion water bottle it will then go into this uh, brewing stand and then it will go into that shock box once that shock box is full it will get crushed shot down a water pipeline and ooh, i am maybe stuck want to break that glass. Let me see if I can rock it out of here. Ooh, ooh, oh my gosh, don't want to die. All right, two point landing. All right. <laughs> All right, so then after the, um, the potions get um, brought up to the surface here, we, uh, we actually have a cycler that uh, we can go and press this button here and it will cycle through all the different shock boxes of potions and it will crush it drops down and if it's empty so let's say if I took all the potions or water bottles out of there it would then go into the empty shock box storage otherwise if it's full it detects it and puts it back up at the top and then it goes back into the chest at the back of the queue of item uh, shock box to be cycled through all right drop down here all right, so after the uh, automatic brewing gets taken care of, automatic uh, potion filter gets taken care of, then we have our flint, steel, shears, water buckets, and lava buckets sorter. So all of those items, when going through the dispenser, won't go through this because we double pulse this. So water bucket, lava bucket would dispense out and yanked right back in again. And those would drop down to our next unit down there. If it's uh, hopper minecarts, minecarts, boats, tools, those drop down to the next section. We'll go over that next. And then all this stuff that's uh, flint, sh steel, shears, and water, bo uh, water, water buckets and lava buckets will come down here. And um, let's see where we go. Over here, and it goes in here. All right. So then, if it's uh, here, okay, over here. Yeah. So we got a unit that separates the liquid water buckets and the. Um, 
lava and water from the flint and steel and shears, dispenses it out um, twice here, and it'll uh, dispenses out once, actually, I mean, and then this one over here will have a bucket, one bucket put in into it, and dispense once, grabbing if it's liquid, um, water, lava, will get yanked and brought onto this side, kind of a transfer from dispenser to dispenser. Anything left then would be flint and steel, or shears, or an empty bucket. So that gets dropped down, we sort out the bucket, and then the flint and steel and shears get sorted over there, and the water and lava then drop down there, which don't have a really good way down there at the moment, uh, take a bit. Uh, but that's down there we sort out the water and lava. Over here we sort out the flint and steel from the shears. We dispense it out. If it starts on fire, observer detects it. That puts the fire out and that shifts it and puts it one way. If it doesn't start on fire, it goes and shifts the other way. So that's how we separate those. All right, so that's those five, those items. Now over to the items that drop down from that sorter. So first off, we dispense them onto the rail, the one that I got stuck on earlier. And if it's minecart, it will go onto the rail. Boats and tools and everything else drop down through the rail onto a hopper and go down to the boat sorter. So the rails, it gets broken up over there. A non-sackle sorter pulls the items that are broken up from that, like the chests, hopper, furnace, TNT, those get sorted out. Everything else is just a minecart, and those get put away. Now over here, we have a boat sorter. Um, an original design just fired out and moved on its own. This design actually had to make a version that pushed it with a piston, because it didn't have momentum on its own, so that gives it a little bit of a oomph, and hits the cactus, breaks, and gets sorted away into the sorting machine. Uh, or put away, I mean. Uh, and then everything else goes into these hoppers here, and that would be your tools and other stuff that's not sorted, that's non-stackable. Those get it put into the overflow. Now, if we were to be in non-peaceful permanently, we could do some sorting with tools, with um, some of the villager or zombie mechanics and stuff, where they take certain types of tools and stuff. But um, our server, we switched back and forth from peaceful, so that wasn't an option with our server. And with new servers that might be going on or whatever in the future, it might not be quite an option with those. We'll have to see how the mechanics work out. Um, yeah, as far as the sorter is concerned, I think that's majority of it. Um, Oh yeah, another thing too is, now we have that unloader I was telling you about. Now say you dump in here a full inventory of shock boxes. Now that's gonna take a quite a long while to sort through all of those. Uh, we got a couple chests here and some hoppers for extra buffer as well, just in case too. But um, even still, that massive amount of items, it'd be, pretty crazy to put um, that many chests over here for buffer. So instead we just have five double chests for a buffer and instead we trigger this redstone line here when it gets, you know, when three of uh, these get full and this one gets an item in it, then we'll trigger redstone line turn on here shutting down the unloader. So it'll stop loading up, that'll give us an extra double chest and most of a second double chest for players to dump in their items manually into the sorter rather than just drop a full shock box in because we don't want to interfere with other players using the system. Many people might be using this all at one time. You need to always have that in consideration. And we built this in the end to reduce lag, much less um, lag and issues and stuff even on the PlayStation or regular PlayStation. Um, even with this thing being way bigger, way more complicated, uh, partially because we put it in the end and there's not a ton of blocks to render as, and light 
sources to be checked and detected and stuff. Tried to half slab and cover up and demob uh, mob proof basically everything we could so that there's no way any mobs can spawn in here. We put it in full uh, like hard or hard mode and nothing spawns in here. Now another thing we put into here too, which we use the shock box storage for is our potion factor we have in here as well so players need uh, potion for some particular reason oh we need night vision oh i want a whole shock box full of night vision potion well you can just grab them out just like the sorter or grab individual ones if they want and there's this full dispenser full of shock boxes and uh, a hopper behind that now once that hopper behind that is no longer filled with items or shock boxes in this case that comparator will turn off and that signal will go to turn on this little factory which has just one brewing stand but it just constantly will brew until it's told to stop so it's very slow but uh, we're not using it too crazy amount to the point where it's a big issue and since this place is most of the time rendered or rendered long enough for all these to run their course and restock it. It works out quite well. And because they're very minimalistic, they're uh, just one single brewing stand, no crazy huge mega factory. It pumps out crazy amounts. It helps reduce lag and spreads that um, resource gain draw on the system over a longer period of time rather than one big spike. Uh, well, I think I covered most of it. There's a lot of other little things, but uh, I just want to highlight and touch on our sorting and storage facility. I haven't uh, done a video in quite a while. Hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, until next time, this is Repairman with Triggercraft signing off.